Hey folks, how y'all doing? Back Eye Flies RC. This is coming to you from the shop. I had some uh, some of my viewers you know, asking questions about setting up models for the first time and you know buying them to their transmitter and this, that, and the other. And I started thinking about it. I started looking at my RC uh, Back Eye Flies basic uh, stuff. I realized I never really did a general basic setup, the principles behind. You know, you got your model put together, you got these things called batteries, you got this thing called a receiver, and you got this radio thing. So how does it all work together? So, I mean, I cover it in specific models that I'm, I'm binding to specific models, but just in general. All right, let, this this is the X-Fly uh, Glass Star version 2. It runs on 3S4, but still a basic four-channel plane. All right. And let's just say, for argument's sake, you got this plane, you follow the instructions, you got it all together, you heard that fat guy said that an AR620 receiver, whatever that is, is all you need, and you ordered one in the mail, and in the instructions it says, you know, you put it in the middle of the plane, you know, away from batteries and everything, some were kind of close to center of gravity, and you did a little bit of research, and you, okay, center of gravity kind of like right there, so I'm going to mount my little... AR620, I'm going to mount that, that wood there away from where they look, that looks like where they want the battery, and it's kind of out of the way. And I've done that now. And I follow the instructions on how to plug, you know, throttle goes into channel one, and channel two is going to be my ailerons, so those things out there, and channel three is going to be my elevator, that thing that goes back up and down the back, and then channel four will be my rudder, and that thing goes back and forth back there. Okay, and then channel one, um, well, actually, thro was throttle, and then aileron, and you know, so tear, T E T E T E T A E R, tear it, or however you want to say it. Well, anyway, the bottom line, I got everything plugged in the way it's supposed to go on the instructions, and uh, looked at a YouTube video on what goes, how you plug in the receiver, and now I think I'm ready to go, but I don't know how to get my new. DX9 that I purchased, or I got used at the club, and they said it works fine, but how do I take this DX9, which is, oh look, it says Spectrum, and that's a Spectrum receiver, how do I get these two to talk to each other? You know, what is, what's this thing they call binding? All right, and how would I set, how do I set a model up, period? Well, well I'm going to show you what, what I do, what that guy fly does. Uh, does. I got my model all together, great and dandy. I'm going to set it off to the side. Okay, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn on this DX9. I don't even use the DX9. This is my backup receiver. Okay, let me get centered on the camera. Okay, and you do everything like my, almost all these. Uh, you do uh, almost all these radios, the Spectrum radios. You use your roller. Okay. You go down here, system setup. Okay, now I am going to make model select. Okay, and I'm going to put see where it says add new model. I'm going to add a new model. And I'm still going to do the same thing. I'm going to go down here, system setup. Okay, are you sure you want to call? Okay, we're going to go to this generalized screen. In other words, when it says, are you sure you want to? This screen here means there's no RF signal being sent out, okay? All right, and we're going to model select. This is my first time setting that model up I got over there, right? And I'm going to go down here at the very bottom, and I'm going to add a new model, okay? Now, if you have a lot of models already remembered, on a transfer, that's why it takes so long. And what kind of model? Well, it's an airplane. Okay, I'm gonna get yes. Okay, now what kind of wing is it? Well, that's just a basic wing. It's just got ailerons. You know, it's got a rudder, an elevator. So just a basic wing. So normal. Hit next. Now something I like to do, and every transfer is a little bit different, but I go ahead and I select my image. Okay, and this I'm going to try to pick something that kind of sort of 
reminds me of that plane. Okay? All right. Now, that's the basic setup. It's ready to receive a plane that has a normal wing and ready to go. All right? But here's what I like to do. Now, this is the plane. Oh, wait, wait. You know what we forgot to do? Back, back to system setup. Yes. Sorry. We want to, now we're back to the model name. Okay? So what I'm going to call this, I'm just going to call it X um, Glass. G L A S. Because I've already got this model on it. I'm just going to call it Glass. But you can name it whatever you want to name. Just whatever helps you um, remember it. Okay? All right, now, now that I got the basic, the X glass scroll, whatever you want to call it, all right, I am now going to set up my throttle cut right off the bat. Okay, see where I picked throttle cut? And it's, it's wanting to know what switch. I like using H. I like H back here. So if you highlight that, toggle that, now you've got H. Okay, so. What I have now in this radio, in this transmitter, I have the basic profile of the transmitter ready to receive its initial binding from the plane. Okay? I've got the plane set up the way I want it. Okay? Now, yes, the prop is on. Okay? All right, prop's off. Okay? We're safe. Got our model all put together with props off. And uh, we're going to plug this weird thing that comes off, what they call the ESC, into the thing that matches on the uh, battery. And then we got this spectrum receiver back here. And they tell me in the instructions that if I want to bind it, there's a button on top. Oh, look. I hit that button on top of that receiver and it's now flashing. That is the same thing as if on the data port or the uh, channel zero, if you would, put the bind plug in there. This is the same thing. You put the blind plug in, plug the receiver in, it's going to start flashing. doesn't matter what kind of receiver it is. The, the basics of binding an aircraft from whatever receiver, whatever brand, and whatever transmitter, whatever brand, is still going to be the same. They almost all work the same. You've got to get the radio or the receiver where you want it, okay? And then the transmitter is what transmits to the receiver. Get the receiver where you want it. Activate its ability to bind. Its ability to bind is by me and this one hitting the button on top, telling it to go into bind mode. And what we're doing by going into bind mode, we're telling the receiver, okay, you are now open, you're now ready to be employed, and we have a boss that's going to hire you. In other words, you're going to bind to the transmitter, okay? The employee is going to get hired by the boss. This is the boss. This is the transmitter. The receiver is the employee. Is the receiver of the information from the NX-10. In this case, the NX-10 just being the model of this transmitter, but they're both spectrum. Got to talk to each other. Okay, so I'm coming back over here. Okay, great. That's flashing. I'm going to try to get three feet away at least, which is just a good rule. And on the NX10, okay, I'm going to go down here to bind. Okay, see what it says bind? Hit bind. Yes, bind. Okay, well it said bind complete and it went through all that little song and dance. That means that the boss is now talking to the employee. See? I am taking input, sending that signal to the receiver from the transmitter to the receiver and telling that plane what... I want it to do. Uh -oh. 
Oh, I got another one not working. I can fix that. It's like a barrel or something. Well, anyways. That's a different story. But base the idea though is I am now sending signal to the to the receiver. This receiver is now bound to this transmitter. That's why they call it the binding process. The other way of doing it, and this is the traditional basic way, okay? That worked fine with that transmitter. Well, by, by its procedure. But let me show you something. I'm going to turn this transmitter off. Okay? I'm going to go to this transmitter. It's DX9. Okay? And what I'm going to do... All right, they've got just a basic acro model there. That's, I don't even know what the setup is. Okay? We hit that bind button again. Okay. You're gonna have to unplug it because it has to re be, give it the ability to reset. Plug it back in. Hit the bind plug or plug in the, the hit the bind plug or the bind button. And now this is how it traditionally works on a on an older transmitter or maybe your transmitter. Turn it on. Hold down the bind button. I'm holding down that buy button. And now I know what's done because it went to the screen that showed that model. Okay, and look at the model. Look, I have control. There's the motor. Okay. Oh, that's right, because I have it set up for flaps. <laughs> that's what that is. Okay. Well, anyway, so that just shows you that's the binding process. You plug the battery into the, you already have it set up however way you want it in your transmitter. Okay. Plug your battery in and either, either have the bind plug already installed or hit the bind button, wait for it to flash, depending on the receiver, and then do that binding procedure. With the NX10, you actually go into the radio. Turn it on, go to the bind area, and bind it. I hope I didn't make that clear as much. Okay, now, let's go back, turn this one off, okay? Unplug this one, because now, let me show you something. Remember, I still have this set up in this NX10, right? When I turn this back on, and I go back to that X-Fly whatever okay that one right there look it ain't doing nothing now but back to flashing again okay take it down to bind hope I'm not yelling at you as soon as I find it Okay. Yes, you want to do that. And look, I have movement, I have control again. So it has, by doing the, putting the receiver in the bind mode, in the ability to take new commands from a new boss, is what you when you change that receiver from plane to plane to plane. So, okay, you take this plane here, you crash it, but you save the receiver. You can now take this receiver and put it into a new plane that doesn't have a receiver. Now, I highly suggest you rebind and start over because that receiver is going to think it's in this plane and try to fly your new plane like this plane, and that just ain't going to work. So. But anyways, you're happy with this. You've got communication. You're happy with the way it is. Now let's start with the after binding setup. Now, like I said, the first thing I want to do was throttle cut. See? Throttle up for me. No throttle. Throttle down. There's a throttle. Now, the other thing I want, I'm going to want to set up 
is I know where my throttle is now. I know that I got that on H. The other thing I want now, I'm going to want to set up my servos. Now, if I look at my elevator back there, and if I pull up on it, I'll put the thing to, if I pull up, see that elevator go up, elevator go down. So I know that I don't have to reverse my elevator because it's going up and it's going down. All right. Now let's go to my aileron. The aileron moving right. Let's let's get turn them all away from me. Okay. This 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 is what you do is you're making sure that your control surfaces work correct. Now remember we only got one aileron working. Okay. All right. Now. Okay. What? Well, look at my. If I hit left aileron and it goes up, see, and it goes down. So my aileron, just, just pretend both ailerons are working. Then I know my ailerons are going the right direction. Because if I hit left aileron, see I'm hitting left aileron, that I'm left over here, that aileron should go up. Because by that going by that aileron going up, that means that wing is going to dip down, that plane is going to pull off in that direction. My elevator, I can pull up the elevator, it's working right. And my rudder is going the right direction. Okay? So I don't need to reverse any of these because all of my control surfaces are working right. I don't need to go through. But let's just say, for argument's sake, that when I hit left, uh, I hit right rudder, uh-oh, look, it's going, it's going left. And if I hit the rudder this way, to the right, I want that rudder to go right. But look, instead it's going left. All right. Well, then that means I need to highlight it and reverse it. See, I, I hit the roller there, made it go down. And now the, ro the, see the, the rudder, now it's going the way I want it to go. Okay. So if you found a control service didn't go right, you go to this reverse screen and, and your uh, functions and reverse it, okay? The other thing I'm going to want to set up is dual rates and expo. Now, for this type of plane, high wing, I'm going to put 100% throws and 30% expo. Now, I have a different video on explaining what dual rates and, and, and expo means. But the, the rate refers to how far the control surface moves. And the expo, the best way to explain it is how quickly it gets there. The more expo you put in, the slower that control surface is going to respond initially. So in other words, if you have a lot of expo, when you first give, say, up elevator, it's going to be a little slow at first, and then it's going to gradually pick up speed as it gets towards the top arc of that control surface, okay, or of that arc of movement. So if I had no expo and I pull up up elevator, then it's going to mean they go straight up to the full range of the throw, okay. If I have a lot of expo, it's going to start out slowly and then go quickly towards the full range of that throw. And um, the purpose of expo is it is really great for a, for a beginner, but it also makes it to where you're not so jerky on the sticks. I mean, because you're, you're pulling back on this, you're like this, you're nervous, well then you're making the plane go all over the place. It makes the controls in the first part of the input a little bit softer. to where the plane's not quite so jerky and doesn't react so quickly, okay? So what I would do for setting up my dual rates and expo, Go at the function, go to DR and Expo, okay, and my aileron, it's already on aileron, I'm going to highlight that, okay, keep that highlighted. I like 100% rate, and I want the Expo, I'm going to roll it over to a positive 30%, okay, then we'll go back here to aileron, or to elevator, go down here at Expo. Going all the way up, pause of 30%. Okay, and then on the rudder, I like it at 100%, and I'm going to give it 30% expo also. Now, just to show you 
Okay? I want to show you something. If I wanted to have dual rates, I was one set of rates that are all 100% with 30% expo, which would be my high, but if I wanted a set that was the low rate, say 70% throws with 30% expo, then what I'm going to need to do, I'm just going to do it with a rudder, but you can do it with all three. You go down here to the switch, see, and switch it to whatever. And let's, let's switch it to, uh, let's just put it on A here. What A, which is that button there. Okay. Now, so when I'm on this away from me, I want to say that's low. And I'm going to say that's going to be 70%. Okay. With 30% expo. And then when I go to high, in other words, high towards me, it's 100% uh, throws with 30% expo. So I'm going to go to go to high. Look at the elevator right there. Okay, see the movement, the range of that movement. Okay, that's at 100% movement, right? Now I'm going to go to the 70%. Watch the screen change. Okay, now look. It's not necessarily as much. Oh wait, we're on the road. <laughs> okay, I'm being stupid. Okay, we're on the, watch the rudder. Okay, high rate on the rudder, back and forth, right? High rate, 100%. Now, 70%. That's low. See, not nearly as much. And you can do that to all the control services. Well, you can do that to your elevator, your rudder, and your ailerons. Okay, those are your primary control services. Now, so basically, I'm going to establish my throttle cut. As soon as I got the model put together, got the receiver in, and I have now bound the aircraft to my chosen transmitter. Okay, so we have communication between the transmitter and the receiver in the plane. It now correctly receives a signal, and now I have verified that all control services work in the correct um, direction. I've already got myself a throttle cut set before I even started this, when I was setting it up in there. Because I know I want it on H or, or A or H or where I put it. Because I don't want to accidentally cut myself. I don't have my prop on inside the shock. Okay? And I know what my throttle, throttle is on and what my throttle is off. I know my control services are now working correctly. And they're, all, they're working correctly with the transmitter and the plane. Now, I want to dictate just how well those control surfaces work. That's why I set up dual rates and expo. And when it says dual rates, that means that most people have a high rate and a low rate. Some people have a high rate, a mid rate, and a, a mid, a high, and a low. Okay, I have three rates. So, but most people just use a high and low. I like mid, but if I was going to use a, um, a mid, remember how I picked A, which is a two position switch? Instead, I would pick something else that has a three position switch, okay? Like say um, C right here has three positions. I would make C the high. I'd make it my 100% over a 30% expo. I go down a uh, section and see right here, I said switch A right there, right hit switch A. See what it says switch A, look at that focus. I would just change that to C and then I will suddenly have three rates I could pick from. I'd make my high 100% over 30, I'd make my mid 85% over 30, and I'd make my low 70 over 30. And then just as you switch up and down, that's how it would switch, translate to the control surface. Okay, I hope I didn't make that clear as much. Now, that is the basic setup for, for a computerized transmitter well, a transmitter to talk to the RC plane. You've got your throttle cut, you've got your control surfaces working correctly, you have solid connection, you know your throttle works right, okay, and all your control surfaces work, works right, and now you've got rates involved to show you how far and how much you want them to travel and what kind of rates. Do you want to go all 100% all the time? Do you want to know that? Whatever you want to do. Now, here's where you choose how you set that up. High wing planes travel slower, usually, than a jet, right? Okay. 
So a high wing plane, its control surface is usually much larger, okay, and therefore need a lot more movement because the plane is traveling slower, so the control surfaces need to be more exaggerated to get the plane to do what you want it to do. Now, you take a jet, per se, okay, here's a good example. You take a jet. Jet flies much faster, okay? Its control surface don't need to move as much. They don't have to move as more uh, distinctly. Whereas this aileron may need to go up and down a lot, this aileron doesn't need to move as much. So, you're gonna want less movement and a little bit less expo. Jets are more advanced, okay? For this one, is it going really fast? I'm only gonna probably put, my high may only be 75% throws, with my low being 55%. And I may only put in five or maybe even only 10% expo because the plane is traveling much faster, so the wind is traveling over the control surface much faster, so it doesn't require as much movement, okay? It doesn't require as much movement to get the plane to do the same thing that you did with the big one with the larger control surface that's flying slower. Bigger control surface, more distinct movement, okay? Faster you go, you don't need as big of a control surface to get that same movement that you're looking for. I hope that I hope that explained it to you. That's why lots of times you'll see people say, well, on my, on my EDF, I don't go any, any faster or any uh, higher throws than 65%. Well, yeah, because their plane travels really fast. And you don't want that thing screaming through the air and you yank up 100% on that elevator and all of a sudden she just goes all over the place. You know, or you tear your servo up or whatever. You, you just, every plane is different. Now, if this was a low wing plane, okay, Warbird, I might tone, tame that down a little bit. Instead of 100% throws on this aileron, I might have 80% or maybe 85% with maybe 15% expo. You see, you, you adapt your plane to the expo and the, and, the, and the rates and the transmitter, you adapt the plane based upon the plane, the wing type, okay? But, like, but still, no matter what, it's still the same basic setup. You're still going to take the receiver, get it to talk to the transmitter, get them locked in, Verify all your control services work correctly, okay? And then from there, you're going to start doing your dual rates and how where you want your throttle cut, and, or well, I would do that first, say, but how you want things. And then, and then from there, you can go to audio settings because if you have a trainer that has audio setups and you say you want high rates, it'll say high rates or it'll say low rates. But that's more advanced. But the basic idea, is, and this same binding procedure it's pretty much the same for a Fataba system or Fursky or however you say it, for the uh, Spectrum system, all pretty much the same. Now, Spectrum works with Spectrum receivers. Fataba works with Fataba receiver, okay? Fursky or however you say it works with their, their uh, brand. They're proprietary. Now there is one called a Radio Master. It has what you call Open TX. And let's just say this was a Radio Master. I could have different protocols and I could operate all kinds of receivers from different companies. But they're a little more complicated to set up. Okay? Now, we talk about computerized transmitters. Okay? This is my latest and greatest transmitter. This is the NX10. It has enough memory on board to control up to 250 models. No, that is not a goal. My wife was worried. This is the DX9. It also could control up to 250 models, but it doesn't have all the abilities and everything that the NX10 does. Okay? Before my DX, I had the DX9, I had the original DX6. I got tired of plugging in old uh, AA batteries and decided to put in the uh, aftermarket battery, put it in wrong, and fried my brand new transmitter. 
That, that's when I got the DX9. Before that, I had the old DX48. Now this is an example of a non-computerized transmitter. This one still works, by the way. But this transmitter would only control one plane. This is usually what you would, back 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you would have got with a, a ready-to-fly Horizon Hobby or Park Zone or um, uh, whatever company you buy. This was an example of a ready-to-fly transmitter that worked with one plane. And that's all you had. But even that had rates on it. Well, anyways, I hope I've explained the basics of setting up a plane. It works the same. You establish communication, and then you customize the plane based upon the wing and how you want to fly. It's the same idea, and that applies to whether it's a warbird, a jet, high wing trainer, a Bigfoot, whatever. However, while you're flying, it's the same basic idea. Okay? I hope I've made that. I hope I've explained that clearly to y'all. Hope that's answered a few questions. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all, and don't forget, faith, family, and friends, and planes. Bye-bye. Yeah, I come over here and turn this on. Hmm.